Torino, uh, what he essentially talks about is that there's he categorizes um, old time music and dance practices and cultural groupings in two main ways. So he looks at it from a formation view where you have uh, dances that are attended by local rural people. Um, and in this type of music and dance practice <clears throat> is an everyday part of social life. Um, it, it's, they share the majority of their habits and parts of themselves with the other people involved in the dance formation. Whereas the other way he views, uh, the old time music making groupings is in terms of cultural cohorts, which usually contain, um, mostly white middle-class participants. And they're usually suburbanites or urbanites that are, are coming together on, let's say, a weekly or a monthly basis uh, to kind of escape their, their everyday lives, right? So these are the two main ways that we can usually look at these kind of old-time music and dance practices and formations. Um, again, people who are this type of practice is part of their everyday life because they grew up in a rural area and this is just a normal part. Uh, it's a basic part of social communication. And then people who um, essentially old time music and dance is an interest group for them where they, they spend a small portion of their life doing this. So the basic distinction between a rural old time music maker and a suburban night is really you know, that basic question between cultural formations and cohorts, right? Um, how normalized are the music and dance practices um, in a person's everyday life? And how long standing uh, are these traditions in the community? Have generations and generations of your family been doing this kind of practice in the town that you grew up in? Or again, are you driving to the next town over uh, to meet up with people on a Friday night and learn some new dance moves, but then during your, your normal nine to five Monday to Friday life, you're, you're a lawyer or something, right? Um, so the folk revival movement that we talked about um, earlier, the one of the 50s and 60s, specifically with like Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, uh, they really influenced the contemporary practices, you know, the practices that exist today. This idea that, urbanites and suburbanites can escape the the trappings of, of capitalism and, and modernity and and modern life and and connect to these practices that they feel have a, a simpler community oriented uh grounding so some some middle class folkies are sometimes what they're called, they're attracted to this particular type of music and dance because it does represent an alternative, an alternative life way to, to being a modernist, capitalist, corporate drone in, in you know, broader U.S. society. Um, it's a it's appealing escape in some ways. So you'll often see um, these middle class folkies, you know, play in restaurants, join together very briefly um, and I'll play a little clip of this just so you can see this group in a restaurant coming together to play this music. Right. So again, it's a really about an uh, interest group. So a popular uh, type of cultural cohort within the old time music community is the contra dance community. And so usually these, this, this grouping of people, um, they've formed an interest group essentially, right? Um, around a particular set of activities and styles. And they particularly are drawn to this type of music and dance through the notions of connecting to a folk tradition, right? And to traditional Americanness. That's what folk represents a return to traditional Americanness, right? And these things may contrast their, their everyday um, values that they normally have of being a, a suburbanite or an urbanite or, you know, a middle-class citizen who subscribes to capitalism, right? So, you know, you can see the poster here showing, hey, um, if you can walk, you can dance. Bring your shoes. Uh, no partner necessary. Free and open to all. 
just come, c participate. We'll have a potluck, right? So people coming together to, to have this kind of uh, dance and community practice. Here are a couple of other posters too, right? Uh, the Floyd County Old Time Music Get Together. Uh, people who grow up with old time music making as a normal part of their everyday in life, they don't need to have a poster to say, let's get together. They'll just call or text each other and say, hey, let's get to together and dance. Let's just do an impromptu thing or, you know, let's just dance in our living room. But in this case, right, um, we're seeing old time week come here for a whole week. Um, we have these kind of players and performers um, you'll, you'll, you can register, right? This, this would tip you off to the idea of it being more of a cultural cohort rather than a formation, because for somebody who grew up with it in their everyday lives, they wouldn't need a poster like this just to get together and, and do these activities. So normally I play this video, but I'm going to skip over it, uh, for the sake of time.